Hi, everybody. How are you? Great. Wasn't that a fantastic film? <laughs> Just thrilling. My name is Matt Carey. I'm the documentary editor at Deadline, and it is my honor and my privilege to welcome down here the director and producer of the film, Ted Braun. <laughs> and by the subject of the film, Maestro Gustavo Dudamel. Gustav, I first wanted to ask you, I mean, it's not everyone who gets asked to be the subject of a documentary, uh, <laughs> but it probably gives one pause, and you want to make sure the right person is doing it, but, but talk about your decision to agree to do this documentary. I haven't agreed. <laughs> 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 or, I don't know, I think, I, I think that uh, seduced me, <laughs> and, and at the end I said yes. No, he, it's very difficult, you know, to to say yes to um, for something that is about your life, <laughs> and especially when where uh, when your life is so public in a way, and 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 <laughs> and sometimes so controversial. <laughs> and you want to keep that, but I think I don't know. It was not difficult. No, no, you said yes very said quickly. Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's I'm too late man. now. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I didn't even really try to seduce you, Gustavo. <laughs> we, we talked no, about I mean, music. We, we, you no, know, absolutely. Yeah. Ted is a musician. Uh, this is the, the the most important thing that you have to know, and is one of the things that uh, I like uh, a lot about the film. That is that that line, you know, that 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 connection, very deep. With the with the journey uh, uh, in the in the soul of the music, and that is why you play the bassoon. Yeah. So <laughs> that is why he is the, the voice of the soul. The voice known, of the yes, soul. The, bassoon, exactly. the voice of the soul. <laughs> well, Ted, talk about that and the importance of of understanding what you know. You've played in an orchestra. What that environment is like, and what what a great conductor is and can do with musicians. Well, the environment that Gustavo and I shared and that I think made it, uh, fortunately for me, very easy for you to say yes, is that, um, y you know, we were both children who, 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 who didn't really have an idea of what we wanted to do with our lives when, when music came, came into our lives. I grew up in a very small town in Vermont, more cows than people. Um, well, truly, <laughs> many more cows than people. And, um, and uh, I, I had a music teacher. A, a woman ran an after-school music program. I, I liked what I was doing. She introduced me to this fellow. His name's Neil Boyer. And he completely changed my life. He opened my eyes to the world of art, to the discipline of practice, and to what it was to come together and share something with an audience. And though I didn't end up a professional musician or you know, uh, uh, a, a genius of the sort that Gustavo is, I did end up making films. And I think a lot of the groundwork for that came from those early days, and, and when Gustav and I talked about that, and we talked about his own deep commitment to music's transformative power, we, we felt we had an understanding. Um, we shared that language and English, and a very tiny bit of Spanish, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Gustavo, we see in the film, of course, that you were so young, a teenager, when you became the conductor of the youth orchestra. Um, how have you changed as a conductor over time and, and evolved? Have you, have you, would you say you have changed? Of course, yeah. I, I, I think the um, the meaning, you know, the the feeling is the same. Of course, we change because because the experience. And well, I started to conduct when I was eleven years old. So um, it's already thirty years conducting. Of course, I have change maybe in I don't know it's it's difficult to see yourself uh, I can when help I was you. young and, <laughs> and, and then when I and now how I, I conduct now I feel I feel embarrassed a little bit <laughs> um, um, but um, yes it's it's especially the action of thinking that change that evolve it's not it's not a change uh, the gesture is one thing but at the end uh, is what you connect with the with the orchestra and with the audience at the same time especially you know what you normally see of a conductor is the back 
and 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 and, 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 and it's very difficult. But the orchestra, uh, that connection, that kind of um, philosophical, uh, psychological, intellectual connection, it evolved with the time. And and I think yes, I I have evolved mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, yes, for maybe for better or for bad, but I have evolved. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember you said something to me when we first sat down, one of those conversations that you quickly came to say yes about, was that you had reached a point in your life where you were no longer thinking about how, but yes. why. Exactly. Why play a particular music? Uh, why why play a particular piece of music, and why play that particular piece of music now? Uh, uh, yes. And, and, and that uh, was not something you felt that you... Uh, yeah. Exactly. It was how, how to make things, but why you make the things. And, and, and there is a lot of, my, my maestro was always talking about the instinct, you know, uh, to be a natural conductor and to have, of course, the instinct. And, and that was one of the first things I think that he saw when he saw me conducting when I was a child. And, but also he, I think, um, he teach me, he gave me the tools to, to make an evolution to the next uh, 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 question that was, why, why I was doing the thing. So yes, this is true. That was one of our first conversations. And Ted, I think one of the things that's beautifully captured in the film, we, we spoke about this yesterday, was how Gustavo was able to communicate musical ideas to an orchestra in a way that also we as an audience, whether we're musicians or not, I, I'm not, unfortunately, we can understand too. So you let us in on that process, but talk about his, you know, extraordinary capacity to to come up with metaphors to to really illuminate that process. Well, I think uh, having just seen the film, you 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 had a chance to see it, and we we winnowed down, you know, a cornucopia and just a, a couple of of examples. The the wonderful, <laughs> it needs to sound more like champagne, less like moonshine. <laughs> Or you have to feel the orchestra like like the air beneath a bird. I mean, uh, we, we talked about this at one point, uh, uh, and you explained that part of your training with Breu and in El Sistema is in analogy, in in helping, in helping people to see things in different terms. And uh, we making the film were just struck by this over and over again. And and. Um, I was curious to learn that it wasn't accidental, that it was something that you, you had as but, part of but, your training. But, but I like m moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we to need to find a bottle. Exactly. You didn't want to knock moonshine in that. No. <laughs> it's especially from my town, Barquisimeto. So. Cucuy is a special, Cucuy, yeah. Exactly. yeah, moonshine. I think of roots music in Appalachia. But <laughs> I don't know. That's another type of music altogether. Um, we see just how, of course, critical El Sistema was to you, Gustavo, and continues to be today. Do you ever think about, you know, if, if you had not, if that hadn't become part of your life, um, you know, what, uh, where you would be without El Sistema? I, I, I don't know. I don't know because uh, El Sistema have, have been, uh, has been part of my life even before I was born, because my father uh, was member of the orchestra and I was listening to the trombone, I'm sure, in the belly of my mom. <laughs> and, 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 and dancing a lot of salsa in the belly of my mom. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, yeah, I, I, I think is, I, I, I don't know really, you know, if I, if I answer to you, maybe I will be a lawyer now, or uh, or a doctor, or things that I love that, that I admire, but I don't see myself doing uh, another thing. You know, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe we're, yes. We're, we're but glad you are not doing something different. <laughs> but you, you know, by the way, when I when I did the test for the university uh, in uh, in Venezuela, uh, you have to do a test uh, 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 for and they give you uh, a list of of the of the uh, studies that you can do, and I remember the list. It was philosophy, <laughs> the first one. Aww. Then it was law, and then was music. See, I don't know. Ma ma imagine <laughs> that I was 16 years old. So yeah, I don't know. 
I can be a good lawyer. If you need one, wait a few years and I can, and I, and I can help you. Maybe, I don't know. As a musician yourself, Ted, is there a, a, a favorite piece of music that Gustavo conducts or maybe has recorded for, for you that just lifts you out of your, your chair? And well, you know, every time I sit through the film, it, I feel tugged in a different direction. Um, you know, uh, it was wonderful to sit here with an audience and, and feel the excitement of those pieces. I mean, I know there were a couple of them, like after the, the ninth, people actually were applauding in the, in the, in the audience, which was mm -hmm. thrilling to hear. I, I have to say, at the moment, I love that, that rehearsal of the Prokofiev that you were doing remotely. You know, that was so weird. I mean, when we recorded it and filmed it at the time, it's like, we'd never seen anything so strange in our lives, and now it's completely normal, <laughs> you know? But that was, that was in, what, 2018? Exactly, it was, it was before the pandemic. Yeah, it was before the pandemic. Yeah. And, oh, and really? so, somehow that, that, that bit of guidance you give them to make the music visible just fires them in a way that's, that's thrilling. But my God, the Tchaikovsky at the end, for a brave, I, I, how could you choose? Mm. Oh, it's, it, it's so truly thrilling. I, I hope everyone felt that, that way tonight, and to hear it in a, a theater is really wonderful with the, the sound. Uh, I want to talk, I think this film is coming out at a really important moment in many respects, in, in multiple ways. Um, yeah, and I'm very struck by the context, actually, if, if you'll permit me to, uh, of Ukraine because I'm sure many of you here have seen uh, videos on YouTube of uh, classical musicians playing the orchestra, the Kiev orchestra playing, um, and that they're in these kinds of times of uh, immense tragedy, we gravitate, I think, especially towards classical music, I think because of its, well, for many reasons, it partly it, it ennobles us, it, it points us to, our higher values, and uh, you know, it's almost as if music is is the opposite of war, if you will. Maybe you could speak to that of it of it come either of you coming out now, and that this is a great comfort to us all. I think to hear this beautiful music. Um, you know, having navigated these last several years um, with Gustavo and 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 making this film. Uh, I, I really was was taken by the way in which you navigated two of probably the toughest years of your life, I would say, um, uh, and and did so by hewing to this belief that that there are things that bring us together that are more powerful and stronger than the things that divide us, mm -hmm. and that art is at the center of that. And if and if we m retain and maintain a conviction to that and not get swayed, we can really contribute something special to the planet. And uh, I think those musicians that you're referring to are part of that same movement and feeling. And, um, and to have a chance to, to be around Gustavo as he, as his own, your own convictions uh, about that were forged and tested and finally affirmed in, in the music that he made uh, was to me deeply inspiring. And, um, and to be able to share that with audiences in any circumstance is great, but at this moment, when, when there is such a glaring example of, of injustice and suffering and such inspiring responses in different ways, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I, I feel, feel worth the long wait to get on the other side of the pandemic and be in a theater with people sharing this communal experience of art. We're gonna open it up to a couple of questions. Thank, yes, thank you, Ted. That's well, Thank you, Gustavo, for expressing it and bringing it to us. Uh, um, Gustavo, you've spoken about this, but maybe you could talk about, uh, about it's addressed in the film, but your, your sense of the importance of music to humanity, that it's, it, it's just intrinsic to, you know, what we can be as a species. You know, it, it, it truly is us at our, our greatest, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Music is beauty, you know, and and and, and, and is it's an universal language, you know. We, we we don't have to speak a specific language to understand a symphony or even a song with lyrics, you know. It gives to you a feeling, something that goes beyond any kind of 
a normal communication. And that is the power. That is, that is the power. I think what um, Maestro Abreu uh, did, his vision was, with El Sistema was to, to make that language accessible and for millions of kids, of children, to speak that language. And you see that the spirit of these orchestras is not only that they play the last movement of the New World Symphony in such a level, you know, in that nucleo, in Los Chorros, is their commitment, their understanding, the the team, uh, the teamwork, the work team that they do, you know, the, the relation that they create. And it's the most beautiful thing because they are all different. We all are, we all are different, you know. An instrument sounds completely different. You cannot make the same, even if you study in the same school with the same teacher, you make a different sound, you know. You, your vibrato in the violin, your way to breathe, all of, all of that. But at the end, it creates harmony. And it creates a harmony that goes beyond perfection, technically, and it creates that kind of healing feeling that you have when you do music, you know. That is why when you are sad, you go and you listen to music, so you put some music and What is this music telling you in words? Nothing. It's only completely something deep, ethereal, but at the same time very deep, that it gives everything to you. And especially for, uh, for, for these children, you know, uh, that, that can live in a specific condition or in a country with a specific situation or whatever, it gives that space to speak that language. And it's amazing, it's, it's great. We were talking about that mm, very difficult moment. Maestro Abreu, I will say he was a man of crisis. He teach us that at crisis was an opportunity all the time. Uh, and I saw that with music. I remember exactly one day <laughs> We had, uh, he said it was very difficult, it was a very difficult situation. I remember I was starting to conduct, um, and then I think uh, the budget of the orchestra was cut, and some of the teachers they were not paid for a year or two years, so there were people struggling. It was with the Simon Bolivar Orchestra. And they say, well, this, in two days, we have to play Mahler Third Symphony, the longest symphony and one of the most difficult one. <laughs> and, and we were like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so Mahler III, you know, you know, we don't have a budget. We, will, we have to play Mozart maybe, you know, with few musicians. No, he picked Mahler III, you know, eight horns, you know, uh, the, the biggest orchestration, whatever. And, and then I, I remember we have only four horns you know, that beginning is pom, 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 and with eight horns playing at the same time, and we have only four or three. I don't remember. And he said, like, yeah, that sounds wonderful, <laughs> he said. It sounds perfect. I think it, it was means to be with three horns, he said. You know, I think, I think Mahler was wrong. He, <laughs> a, 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 and then, no, he, 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 he played with us to make us proud of, of doing that in that way. He convinced us that that was the way how it had to be played. So he saw an opportunity. He created in us, you know, that amazing courage to to do, I, I remember also, it's a video <laughs> of us, thanks God you, you didn't saw that video, <laughs> uh, 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 that a friend of mine showed me that we are playing the last movement of Tchaikovsky fourth. So we, we were playing like for, I, I remember for two months and it was impossible. You, in two months you are learning the first position or something like that. I, I think it was longer, I, I, it was like none, one year. <laughs> so, and we were like that struggling, you know, with something easy, and he says, Tchaikovsky 4, and we play, and it was a video of that, you know, it was on the television even, and you see all of the violins <laughs> playing in the wrong place, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody's so committed, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I remember my teacher told me, 
um, I said, I cannot play this, but show joy. You know, <laughs> show joy. I was like, I, 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 I cannot enjoy. I see this page full of notes. I, not, I can't play only one. So, uh, so at the end, you know, that, that kind of uh, brain working, soul working, it created on us. That is why Alejandro said that we are a family. Because we pass through all of this. It's, it's not the same as an orchestra that you audition and then you become part and all of that. No, we pass this, that Simon Bolivar Orchestra. We started as a children orchestra. So imagine to start, you know, as a child, teenager. It, you know, it's, it's like to live in a family. That is why the identity was there. And it's, the identity is in all of the members of the orchestra. And I have to say, the Simon Bolivar Orchestra is alive and it's an amazing orchestra, you know, incredible. The, the, because that is, was the thing, that is was Maestro Abreu, the future is the children. It's because, you know, some of the musicians left, you know, because the situation and the condition, they keep in contact, they go back a lot, but they left and, and others from the other generation became part of the orchestra and the orchestra is amazing. It sounds wonderful. So that is the miracle of of, of El Sistema and Maestro Abreu vision. So I think we only have time for one or two, and I, you put your hand up first, so. You said early in the film that comfort isn't good and tension is better, oh, yes. thank you. What, what did you mean by that? I mean that comfort Says is not com good. <laughs> and, and tension, it was good. You know, when you get in comfort, is it gets routinary, you know? It happened a lot to professional orchestras. You know, when you are in a, in a space of comfort, that you are there, you play good, you make the notes, it gets lazy, the action of doing music, music and you know, not giving the right message of that. And always being in tension. I remember a, a teacher of mine, he told me the best thing of being a musician is the before going to the stage. Is, is that adrenaline, you are nervous, you don't know if you will survive, but you, you go there, you know, and, 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 you, know, and you, you are thinking in missing one note there. And, and that, all that tension is part of the, of, 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 of the, of the energy that the audience receives uh, in that moment. So, I, I, you know, uh, it's a tension with comfort, let's say, <laughs> but more tension than comfort. Indeed. I think we only have time for, okay. You can do at the same time. I don't know. I, I, I like the movie. I don't like the, the actor. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, 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 it's not true. I, 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 uh, it's great. It's, it's beautiful, you know. It's, uh, when we started, like six years ago, no? We started in February of 2017, February so it's 12, five years ago. Five years ago were those five first years rehearsals. Ago. Imagine to see your life back, you know, it's, it's very strange. It's kind of, wow, but it's wonderful. I think, I think you read it really well, that journey. Thank you. That I, really. I, you, have to, you have to imagine yourself flipping through uh, photos of yourself for the last five years with 300 people beside you. It's a bit of a shock. So yeah. I, have a, I, have a, I have a lot of... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the film. I loved it. Um, You're welcome. I'm, I'm wondering, um, Gustavo, if you could speak to about uh, El Sistema's um, perhaps like advocacy of Venezuelan music. I'm curious about Venezuelan music and oh, if yes. El Sistema also um, taught about Venezuelan uh, music to out, uh, people outside of Venezuela. Yeah, well, Venezuelan music is, is incredible. We have a, an amazing program called Alma Llanera. Uh, that is our second national anthem, which uh, we have orchestras of typical instruments. That is huge. I, I think Ted, uh, you know, with all of you saw that we we yeah, were we visiting it, in the yeah. nucleo. Yeah. We saw the orchestras playing with cuatros, with arpas, with maracas, with all of that, and it's very beautiful. And it's very important. It's part of the of the of the normal life of El Sistema, and in in, in 
in the classical music uh, composition is very important. Um, Maestro Marquez, for example, he goes a lot, he teaches, he's always a connection. I think it's a generation of young composers. But look, one of the things, first things, you know, my father plays salsa and I wanted to be a salsa player. I discover Stravinsky and Korsakov and Beethoven and then I say like, wow, I, lo I love this. And I got into that, but we have a cuatro in my house, in our house. So I create a duo. I was playing and singing with a friend. I'm a very bad singer, but at that time, uh, I was singing better than what I do now. <laughs> and then I have a, 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 an uncle that was a doctor, and he played the cuatro, the arpa, and all of that. And he told me, look, son, if you go out of the country, of course, you will play Beethoven, you will play Shostakovich, you will play all of this. But it will be important that you bring your music. So <laughs> with my violin, I was playing. He made me learn a lot of Venezuelan music. And I was playing serenades in my town. You know, we went to houses and we play. And then they let us in and we were playing. So, yes, it's part of our regular action. Yes. Well, we have to... Uh Wrap it up here, I'm afraid, and uh, give us a couple of minutes, if you would, afterwards. They're going to take some photos, but please join me in, in thanking the director, Ted Braun. Thank you, man. And Gustavo Duramel. Nice bro. <laughs>